All right, hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out as always. So we're gonna revisit Vinset today. It's been a little while since we've taken a look at the list. Uh, so I'll talk through my current iteration of the list and we'll jump on Talishar for some rep. So I'm really trying to get some testing in, last minute testing. We're actually traveling to Fargo tomorrow, which is a little ways from us here in Winnipeg uh, to attend a second PQ. So we are gonna get one ProQuest here in Winnipeg uh, next weekend. So uh, a group of us are traveling so we can get access to, you know, some more of these uh, higher level events. So looking forward to that, but uh, I got to get some testing. I'm a little bit behind. Uh, so I really do think Vincent is quite well positioned right now. Uh, she's only getting better in the meta uh, and the deck is feeling quite good. So uh, let's take a look together uh, and see where we're at. All right. So uh, here's my current list. It hasn't changed all that much since my last update, uh, but I'll go through and talk uh, through some of my choices right now and where I'm at uh, thinking about the list. So of course, Vincent at the helm here. Um, so you should be aware by now, I'm not gonna go through all of her abilities and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I am on Bloodied Oval as a sort of defa default um, offhand. Um, there are other options here. I'm really trying to maximize my sideboard slots right now. Uh, and the extra point of health, um, even though sometimes I can forget, but you know, one point can help with a really serious uh, break point where you might, you know, sometimes uh, alternatively throw creepers under the bus. Really nice to just throw oval under the bus instead. I do still forget about this piece though, um, which is again why I need to test some more. So I need to be looking at Buddy Oval uh, to bail me out of some of those awkward situations where you really have no um, option but to block out uh, Scary on him, right? So Crown of Pot Providence is still my default headpiece. Uh, we got an interesting second choice now in the sideboard that I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but this is great. Helps fix your hand if you have an issue. You know, sink something from your hand or ideally sink something from your arsenal. Saves you from a, a you know... Uh, CNC on hit. Uh, I don't need to sing the praises of Crown of Providence. It's very good. Flail of Agony is still my default uh, weapon. We are really trying to minimize the number of blues in the deck at this point um, in favor of, uh, you know, high damage output cards sort of thing. So uh, Flail as a f basically free attack with irrelevant on hit, creating a rune chant and the on hurt uh, or ability to trigger on hurt effects by hurting yourself, uh, you know, get an, an extra rune chant. It's really relevant. Uh, and so uh, I think it's a clear choice at this point, especially with the low volume of blues. If you are running a higher blue count in your Vincent list, then there are other options out there. Uh, but I really like flail here as a default in the current iteration of the build. Spring Tunic, uh, that one resource, especially now that we're on minimal blues, uh, can represent a free envelop in darkness or a free uh, incantation. Uh, really great as a default chess piece. Grass can really bail us out uh, of a sticky situation. Uh, we don't always want to be pitching into it, but once in a while, you know, a two cost ring gate, uh, gate card plus a blue, um, you know, to pitch into grass and make that second uh, rune chant at the beginning of your turn. Uh, can be powerful enough. Uh, also represents three health, three life, which is uh, hard to get around. I was thinking about vexing as a potential sideboard piece uh, into certain matchups where, you know, we have more opportunity to set up. Uh, it might actually be the choice. I'm, I guess I was reflecting on uh, it in Guardian. However, it's hard to, you know, the, the three life is, is very relevant. So argue it to be made for vexing in the sideboard. Definitely test it out. Spellbound Creepers, amazing piece. Uh, it's not going to come up every single game, but when it does, uh, it can facilitate some crazy shenanigans, some three wide turns, some two wide turns, uh, and it can really sometimes unstick uh, an awkward turn. Um, so, you know, if you get one activation on it, great. If you get two, you're uh, gaming. Uh, so anyways, Spellbound Creepers, amazing uh, opportunity piece sort of thing so it really increases the ceiling of our deck i think as mentioned before i was kind of uh so looking at the main board here we have a 46 card main main board so we're gonna be uh siding in 14 cards from our sideboard uh and this is a pretty solid core i'm pretty settled on this core um so bounding demigon i mentioned before i was sort of sleeping on this card uh 
as a zero for four, that is a potential banished uh, target as well from hand if you don't have, you know, uh, a high value uh, rune gate card or a, a rune gate card that works for, you know, where you're at in the game sort of thing. Uh, Bounding Demigon is a very valid target for banishing and it can represent a pretty easy follow up to a rune gate card if you can give it go again. Zero for four is nothing to scoff at. Uh, then it's just about getting a critical mass of rune gate cards. So we're running three of Deathly Delight. The life gain is uh, nice. Um, and two cost rune gate cards are really where we want to be. So having a, a good volume of those really. So a two cost for five that gains life is, uh, you know, great. Deathly Whale is the bread and butter of the deck. So on the rainbow, I don't think there's any way around this. Uh, rolling those rune gates from turn to turn is really what will win you the game. So if you're able to string these turn after turn, uh, you're looking pretty good. Uh, so yeah, three cost rune gate uh, creates you rune chance, either one or two, uh, depending on whether you've taken damage or your opponent's taken damage or both. Um, Envelop in Darkness is one of the most, um, <clears throat> the cards I flip-flopped on most. We've pulled the blues. Uh, we are now on three reds, two yellows. Um, and again, it's it's challenging to identify, you know, the correct number of cards that uh, create rune chance uh, in order for you to, you know, smooth out your deck and, and be able to consistently play out your rune gate cards. Um, this number of envelops feel good, especially on a low number of blues. You really want to be playing them off of Tunic if possible. Uh, sometimes, you know, of course you're going to pay for them. No big deal. Uh, it's especially feels good if you can pay for two of them or if you can pay for one and an incantation if you side that in. But anyways, um, yeah, five of envelop. If you don't know what it does, it buffs your next rune gate attack. Uh, but may perhaps more importantly, it creates your rune chant token. Um, yeah, there, there's an argument to be made to bring in the blues if you need a higher concentration of blues, but I'm not really feeling it right now. Um, or if you do want more rune chant generation than Oath of the Ark Knight, uh, blue, which blocks for three, uh, maybe a better choice at the, uh, for the blue slot. Um, Funeral Moon, um, it's a versatile card. The math on it is not very good, but again, we're looking for that critical mass of, uh, making rune chant tokens and the zero cost is really, really attractive now that we're trying to cut back on the number of blues we're playing, uh, and a three block again. So... It's got some versatility and the stats, the this stat specifically, the zero up here and the three down here, uh, and the fact that it can unstick us and create a rune chant when we um, need to or want to. It also synergizes really well with Deathly Whale, can facilitate that on hurt that creates us an extra rune chant uh, plus the rune chant off of Funeral Moon. So its versatility does make it worthwhile. So we're back on three Funeral Moon. Uh, in the main board, we have our red mob skies and our blue mob skies. We do need a good volume of go again enablers. Um, and so uh, this is kind of where I've settled for go again enablers. Uh, six mob skies, reds and blues, as well as shadow puppetry, which shadow puppetry is so good. Shadow puppetry and deathly whale alone. Of course, it requires you to have uh, three rune chants to be able to play it out. But shadow puppetry, take you know, if you're if we're talking Deathly Whale, you're always taking the damage to Vincent. Shadow Puppetry, Vincent Trigger, take the damage into Deathly Whale. If they don't respect the Shadow Puppetry on hit, if you happen to get lucky and hit a two cost ring gate off the top of your deck, you've just turned a two card hand into uh, 15, 16, 17 damage uh, for two cards. Not bad. <laughs> so the ceiling on that combo is really really high read the runes on turn zero if you're a real gamer uh is uh the best feeling in the world uh so we're running two in the main board uh we'll take a look we do have the third in the sideboard along with oblivion but honestly i'm sort of on the fence about that but two read the runes uh also good on creepers also good to follow up a mob skies turn so arguments be made to play all three in the deck i don't know but uh two feels good to me right now Okay, uh, back to our Runegate cards. So Runegate, Deathly Delight, Deathly Whale, and now the rest of our cards are all Runegate cards. Vantum Wraith, again, we love those two cost Runegate cards. So two for six. Vanilla doesn't do anything other than that, but that is good enough. 
Another two for six here in Widespread Ruin that uh, on Hurt, so each hero who has lost life this turn, banishes the top card of their deck uh, as we close the chain. So that's what all the Widespreads do, uh, if you're not aware. Uh, widespread Ruin, Widespread Destruction, and Widespread Annihilation are all Ruin Gate cards with varying costs. So two costs at red, three costs at yellow, four costs at blue, and they banish from different areas. So red from top of deck when you close the chain, uh, yellow from arsenal, and blue from hand. So be careful, or at least consider this. Um, if you're not able to play out your hand, uh, or if you have an arsenal, you do have to consider these on your uh, like when you're presenting them. If you do take damage either to Vincent's ability or otherwise, this will trigger uh, for you too, and that could be a positive thing or it could be a negative thing. You know, I often forget that these also impact you, right? You always think about or hard focus on how they're impacting your opponent. So banishing something from top of deck, usually not the end of the world, but it can be beneficial to you. So if you are able to take damage, or if you have the choice to take damage, like from Shadow Puppetry or Funeral Moon or something, Envelop in Darkness, you can think about, you know, if that banish would be beneficial to you, either freeing up an arsenal, or maybe, like I was trying to explain, uh, sort of strategically setting up an arsenal knowing that you will likely banish it, like if you have a widespread destruction banked, for example, and you have a way of hurting yourself before closing the chain, um, or even widespread annihilation. Uh, this one probably less so, you probably, but if you're going to IP pen penalty yourself anyways, this is a way to sort of set up your uh, banish for the next turn. So I guess all I meant to say with that is just consider how these impact you as well. Okay, let's look at the inventory now, the sideboard, 14 pieces coming in. As mentioned, we do have the third read the runes here in uh, uh, our sideboard, along with Oblivion. Um, I'm still on the fence about Oblivion. It's come in and out of the deck over time. You almost, it's its a lot of fun. Uh, it's flavorful. So when you have the third read the runes in, it's very tempting to uh, run Oblivion as well. Uh, I am on the fence about uh these pieces so i think in talking about it i almost convinced myself that the third read the runes is good uh whether oblivion is good or not uh really depends on the matchup there are examples of when it's very impactful but uh you don't want to be playing around it that's for sure it can definitely lead to some sloppy play lines um, if you're really trying to build up those rune chants for the sole purpose of getting uh your demon out so just be careful with oblivion if you do try uh or consider playing it I'm actually surprisingly getting <clears throat> colder and colder on Reduce to Rune Chant. Uh, you never want to be pitching for it, so it can feel really awkward in your hand. Uh, if you roll into your opponent's turn, you don't have any Rune Chants banked. So if you have Rune Chants, this does cost zero, but if you have no Rune Chants, you have to pay for it. Does make you a Rune Chant, which is nice. Does block for four, which is nice. But again, it can feel awkward if you're forced to pitch for it, or if you're just sitting on it, it ends up in your arsenal. It is still quite good. You can, Tunic can pay for it, which is nice. Uh, you know, there's a road where uh, Funeral Moon can make the Rune Chant on your opponent's turn so you can play this out. So, like, there are pathways to make this good. But honestly, Sigil, and Su Sig Sigil of Suffering is uh, going in for me lately before Reduce to Rune Chant. So if I need a number of defense reactions, I'll side in Sigils first and then Reduce to Rune Chant. So... I'm sort of favoring Sigil of Suffering just because it is free. Um, and it interacts with your opponent on their turn, which I think is really, really interesting. They're often not going to have uh, extra resources that they're happy to pay for the arcane. So it's often a zero for four um, that deals a damage, uh, an arcane damage to them. So I, I really like Sigil. Uh, not to say that Reduce is bad. Uh, I'm just sort of like steering away from it a little bit if that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to skip Revel for now and go to Runeblood Incantation. This is sort of a uh, consistency piece. Um, this is really good um, in terms of setup. So it depends on the matchup. Like, if you're trying to just go straight aggro, push aggro, probably not the best choice. But if you're in more of a grindy matchup, uh, if you're going to have opportunity to set up, um, if you're worried about late game against a grindy deck, then Runeblood Incantation is a very, very good option. 
So uh, it just makes you a rune chant at the beginning of your turn for the next three turns. So it can really like facilitate uh, rolling those uh, big turns, turn after turn, and pushing arcane damage if you have a, or if you're up against a red line deck. Um, another one that pushes a lot of arcane is Revel and Runeblood. So my, as soon as I'm trying to push aggro, like honestly, a lot of the time, mobs come in. Uh, yellow mauve, so then we're on nine mauve, and when yellow mauve comes in, revel and rune blood comes in, because uh, then you can just mauve rain skies give something go again. Revel present a second rune gate card as the dream, um, but yeah, revel and rune blood is so good. So when the mobs come in, revel comes in, and when the mobs come in, lunging press comes in. <laughs> so lunging press, uh, especially like. One of the big benefits of playing Vincent, honestly, is catching your opponents off guard. Uh, my locals are very much uh, aware of my shenanigans by now, so I can't really fool them. But if you roll up with Vincent and people are not used to playing Vincent or they haven't teched for Vincent, which is, you know, totally fair, and they haven't gotten reps into Vincent, you can really take them by surprise. And Lunging Press is something they're not going to be expecting. So you know, your opponent's always trying to get maximum value. They're trying to block things outright. Each point of value is, you know, worth quite a bit. So if they're blocking exactsies, you catch them off guard with the lunging press, which can facilitate a mob skies on hit, create two rune chants uh, on yellow, three rune chants on red, which might allow you to play a second deathly whale or something and have a crazy turn where you're still ending on rune chants, etc., etc. So, uh, Again, zero costs in the deck. Um, we're trying to do things for free, cheating out cards using Rune Gate, really leaning on that Tunic resource to facilitate Envelop or Rune Blood Incantation. So we don't want to be pitching for stuff most turns. So a zero cost that buffs your attack, really, really good. That said, we have a large number of blues, or we have access to a large number of blues. So we're running nine in the main board. But we have another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the sideboard. So we can go up to 18 blues. And if we're siding in the lunging presses, uh, I wanted to give some more blue options. And rather than plus one, if they start over blocking plus one, uh, I think blue pummel is an interesting option. Red pummel might be a little overkill. Um, if they have a sink below or a defense reaction, they're going to stuff it anyway. So blue pummel plus two on hit discard. Uh, it's a blue, which, uh, you know, strengthens our matchup into Kano, uh, etc., etc. So I really like blue pummel. Um, and if you're siding in the lunging presses, lunging press can play for pum or pay for pummel and the pummels can pay for other pummels. Uh, the dream is like pitch a blue for envelop, have two float for pummel. Uh, so blue pummels are in the, in the list right now, uh, sort of as a, a test piece. Excuse me. So... Uh, as mentioned, Oblivion will come in uh, if we have the three read the runes in. Mostly for grindier matchups when we're trying to set up. Um, Chains, another blue that's currently in the list. So if there are four cards that I would identify right now that I'm not sure about, it's read the runes, Oblivion, and Chains. And then probably Pummel, which is just sort of like an experiment right now, blue Pummel. But... Chains is situational <laughs> for sure, but we have a lot of we have a lot of decks right now. Ko specifically, who, which is widely played in the meta, uh, basically um, strengthen the argument for chains. So chains, especially if your opponent doesn't know what it does or how to play around it, it can be really bamboozling. Um, instead of drawing a card, they have to banish it essentially. So it says uh, if you play it from uh, banished. It'll stick around for two turns. You put a Doom counter on it, then you remove it at the start of your next turn. So if a hero would draw a card during an action phase, instead they banish the top card of their deck and may play it this turn. So this shuts down Blood Rush Bellow, uh, big time, uh, Art of War, etc. There's also a world. It's slim, but I was testing against a KO. If KO presents an attack for some reason before a Blood Rush Pello, and you defend with an attack action card, you could actually Creepers in Chains of Mephetis. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, judge in the uh, comment section. Um, 
you should be able to, I think there's a window before uh, between paying for Blood Rush Bellow cost, which requires the discard. So you pay for Blood Rush Bellow, you discard. I think there's a window to respond there. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. You could Creepers in at instant speeds, a Chains of Mephetis, which would shut down the draw that they're expecting. So there are some fringe cases where this can be really, really impactful. Um, other times it does very little. So I don't know. On the fence for Chains, definitely an argument to be made that Chains is good now with more decks that want to draw cards like our Brutes and like our Ninjas and etc. etc. Um, you know, even Tome of Imperial Flame. So there's a lot of card draw in the meta right now. So Chains, uh, yep, it's in the deck. <laughs> but again, I don't know exactly how I feel about it. This is why we're here. This is why we're testing. Because draw is huge in the meta right now, Balance of Justice is always quite is already, um, also quite good. Um, sim very similar to Crown uh, in that it blocks for two. And then instead of fixing your hand or sinking your arsenal to draw a card, uh, which is like a replacement effect, this just draws you a card. So it gives you plus one cards, which is very, very good. But it's only if your opponent has drawn two. So Blood Rush Bellow, Tome of Imperial Flame, Art of War, all of these different things that we already sort of discussed. So this is why Balance of Justice in the list. It's quite good. Um, Dyadic Carapace, if we need... Uh, you know, extra life. Honestly, I'm I'm default tunic most of the time. This, like the arcane barrier, is usually why we we side dyadic in against Kano. Uh, but if you are worried about um, some particularly nasty on hits, then the the three extra life can be very impactful. Uh, you know, if you find sideboard slots, uh, you could play around with carry and husk as well. I think husk is a bit of a liability. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There could be a world where it's impactful into Guardian, but Guardian can grind you out too much. I don't know. Uh, I don't feel, I'm not feeling Husk, but um, you can try it out. Ebon Fold for Spell Void 2. There are tons of options for Spell Void, uh, by the way, as a Shadow Rune Blade. Um, so Ebon Fold is a, is a great option here on head for Spell Void 2 uh, into Kano because Kano uh, balance is not going to work. Um, well, could draw you a card actually, but. Um, Nah, not really. I guess with Tome. Yeah, there's a situation where it draws you a card. I keep going back and forth. But anyways, I'm going to fold Spellvoid 2. Great. Uh, Grimoire, really just for the Arcane Barrier. But there's a world where, you know, it can help close out a game. Basically give a read the runes go again. And it could represent the, the rune chance you need to push out that last big attack. But honestly, mostly there for Arcane Barrier 1. So, uh, I got down and dirty in the maybe board right now. Uh, feels really good into Dromai, so if you're in a Dromai heavy meta, definitely put Down and Dirty in. Uh, if I was in that situation, I would, depending on your meta, like if you don't have that many KOs floating around, I would pull out Chains and pop in two Down uh, down and Dirty. Or you can consider, you know, maybe just foregoing the Read the Runes Oblivion, or the third Read the Runes Oblivion. Uh, be relegated to the fact that you're going to rely on two and draw them every time on turn zero. Just do that um or you can look to pummel as our sort of experimental slot okay so uh let me know what you think uh, i have this is a new like pq testing i don't have very many results on this list i just wanted a clean slate uh to try and get a sense of how this deck performs in the current meta and so let's jump on talishar and do just that so let's see what we can pair into um and let's yeah, we'll talk through some some plans. My matchups are going to be kind of broken since I've made a few tweaks to the deck. Um, Betsy skin in the game. Interesting. We basically always want to go first to be able to set up. Um, for Betsy, I don't know if we're that worried about getting fatigued. I'm not that um, versed in this matchup, but I'm tempted to first side in all of my aggro pieces. So that is Mob Skies, Lunging Press, Revel. I wonder if we go Incant. I don't think we want to side a significant amount of um, D Reacts in this matchup. I think let's test Blue Pummel. See how that feels. And I wonder if we just forego D Reacts altogether. They can overpower us pretty, pretty hard. 
So, no, maybe we do run, let's run three D reacts. This could be a super aggro Betsy, and in that case, uh, I'll, I think it's maybe, maybe best of both worlds, we, we just go with three D reacts and our aggro pieces. And again, sigil first over re reduce in this case, if we're trying to push aggro. Ah, see? This is all you got to do. Turn zero, draw, read the runes, and you're laughing, right? So, um, I mean, widespread annihilation uh, with read the runes here is actually maybe the target for banish here. Um, alternatively, I could have pitched it for grass, but I think it's just more of an impactful piece. We're going to read, and we're going to arsenal this card. Uh, next turn, this is not going to come up, but... Um... Hmm. I wonder if we... We'll see what they present, but there's two sort of like thought processes here. So we could go Deathly Whale. There's so many rune chants that they're... Mm, no. This is going to be a grindy matchup probably. So we're not going to be banishing the second Annihilation. Um, we're probably going to block this out. I guess we go Vantom Wraith as well. Because my thinking on this next turn is we either present Annihilation and just they'll have to give us their hand essentially, or we go Deathly Whale in hopes of setting up more rune chance to float Annihilation to the next turn. Either way, we're going to be banishing the Deathly Whale. So, banish Deathly Whale, we're at 5. So. We could either go Deathly Whale, but if they block it out, we're sad. Because we need them to at least take one damage so that we can Funeral Moon and end on three rune chants. So I think we just go I think we just go Annihilation here. And then they Yeah. If they take any damage, they're gonna lose a card from hand, uh, which is quite punishing, so they might just give us their hand. Um, which could be the call here. Which means we can't play Funeral Moon on their turn, um, or on our turn, but that might be okay. Oh, they have, no, yeah, they have to take a damage here. They don't want to give us, so that's great. We get to end on a Rune Chant. I'm happy about that. And we pass. So they're just going to pass back. We again didn't draw into any Go again, but we do have Envelop. But... Yeah, it's not really. So this turn is just going to be presenting Whale. I was thinking about whether there was a Creeper's line here. There is not, because we need to present Whale first. I think I want to preserve Tunic Resource, so we're going to banish the second Whale. So I'm missing something. No. We're going to banish the second Whale. Oh, I was missing something. The Revel. Hmm, I don't think it's time yet. I think it's good enough to just uh, pitch for Envelop. Hmm, I think the Bounding, because we're going to have a second Deathly Whale, which Delight, if we do end up banishing it, is a higher value target right now. We're always going to take the damage when we're following it up with a uh, Whale. And this is three and eight. With one unpreventable, we'll end on two rune chants. Uh, and we're kind of digging for go again right now. So I should be taking notes. <laughs> what we're needing in each round or, you know, what was missing in a given game. Right now, I think go again enablers would have made some of these turns more impactful. I could have jumped through some hoops there uh, and gotten rid of the rebel, um, but I think this just, in terms of value here, early game is maybe the call. So they're, I was gonna say, gonna take some damage. They're still gonna take some damage. What does this do again? Next time you, uh, if you do create vigor, so they're gonna get a vigor. They prevented two. They still went to thirty-three. And we're just good. So we make two rune chants. So we drew into nothing but 
attack action cards, which makes the block easy. Um, we have a red whale. We keep sitting on this blue whale. Hmm. How much do they care about... There's another argument to be made that we... I think we just want to keep rolling uh, whales, though. So I think we just give them these three. Yeah. Give them three. They'll sit on an arsenal. That's fine. We're going to present three and six here and give them a choice on whether they want to let us float an arsenal. So they basically have to give, give us three cards or let us make a rune chant to float to the next turn. We're still waiting on... Uh, way to play out this revel so maybe I should have just taken advantage of that value when I when I had the opportunity off of creepers but I want to preserve creep creepers too see Betsy's the weird one where I don't know if I need to play it like a guardian like really have build up turns and and present big big numbers I don't think Betsy is the oh did we win a clash I missed that um, okay. Good. So we don't get our, our, uh, rune chant to float over. That's fine. We have shadow puppetry, but we're not going to be able to deathly wail. Hmm. Okay. So we want to banish one of these ruins. Uh. And then, yeah, there's a line here. It's a big number line, but it's not great in terms of uh, rune chance. So I think we just give widespread ruin. Okay, so not the best line, but we're going to banish widespread ruin, make a rune chant. We're going to have to pitch to grasp with the tunic resource and the yellow. We're going to play Shadow Puppetry. Mm. We don't care to take the life here. So the, the thought is, do we want to banish something off top? Uh, making the rune chance at the end of turn is not going to matter because we are going to be reveling this turn uh, in order to get the Deathly Whale out. So it's still 8 plus 8. So it's a 16 damage turn. Nothing to scoff at. But it's definitely not the ceiling for this combination of cards like shadow puppetry deathly whale ruin revel but it is what it is revel breaks your rune chance at end of turn uh so it kind of bamboozles our whale uh rune chant generation okay so they pitched to block three uh or the two rune chants that we presented so far another slap happy Uh, great. So they're, f yeah, they're full blocking this. That's fine. Then we play the Revel and the Whale. So another eight. The on hit doesn't matter anymore. Uh, they are going to take some damage here. So we are just pushing damage at this point, which is fine. Uh, we'll see if we can continue to roll or if we need to take a setup turn next turn. Which might just be fine against Betsy, honestly. Guardian, we don't need to be too worried about taking a setup turn every once in a while. Uh, it can be beneficial to uh, drop those big numbers that we need to push over the top. So this does look like a setup turn to me. We might play one of these funeral moons. Uh, we're gonna, yeah, might play both of them at the end of this turn. I don't know. Or we just block. Hmm. Two. We might give up one of them. We might give up both of them, if I'm being honest. Just preserve life here. Because next turn, all we're going to be able to do is banish Annihilation and Lunging Press. The dream is to draw into a mob skies, which we haven't seen that many. I know we pitched one. Do we give them bloody? Oh, we can't give them bloody double. So, okay, we're gonna 
play for the dream. Banish the Annihilation. We do have gold, but I want to sit on this. Oops, 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 oops. Back, 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 back. Undo. Sorry. I meant to arsenal. Boop, boop. Double clicked my uh, arsenal. My space bar back. Oof. Okay. No. <laughs> um. We love to see the mob skies. We need a rune gate card. So we might crown. Ugh, Anothos. Crown. Pass. Sink. No. Sigil. Not what we want. Not what we want. So we're paying for drawing into nothing but attack action cards earlier by drawing nothing but non-attack actions. Like, unfortunately, you know, tempted to say like Runeblade Curse, whatever, any deck can fall on its face. Um, this is the situation we're in right now. Um, so we're just going to continue to set up. I might be greedy. We're going to banish this. We're going to pitch to the gold just to see. Envelop is a good target. Like, I like these cards. Uh, we'd have to pitch four, which we can't do. We don't want to present flail. We're just going to pass and hope that we draw into a ring gate card. Because <laughs> then we're laughing. Um, we can have a very impactful turn here. No! <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? So we've seen four, five, six, seven, eight non-attack action cards in a row. Which is really not where we want to be. So, luckily, we are into a guardian that's not doing much. So, we're not getting punished that hard. Um, we're just going to give two, and we're going to banish one of the mobs. And just, we're getting greedy, and we're going to try and continue to dig for answers. All we're doing is banishing a card and making a rune chan on our turn, which is not good. Why not draw into three more non-attack action cards? So this is 11 we've seen in a row. Um, really not good. <laughs> but Betsy's not doing anything in response. So please don't use this as an indication as to how Vincent often functions because this is not a good indication of how the deck often functions. I'm still tempted to be greedy and sit on the mob and the lunging <laughs> so we're happy to give these oh do we just no 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 because we're gonna play out hmm. we're gonna play out the annihilation next turn Hmm. We're gonna... No. I'm just getting a little... <laughs> uh, flustered here. We need to keep something to banish. Doesn't matter what we banish. But we are, we don't want the, the crush effect, so we're going to give them grasp here as well. We're going to banish Revel, we're going to play the mob skies, try and get some value off of that, because uh, we've been greedy and sitting on lunging press mob skies. Um, we haven't really navigated, I mean, we've been, we've been greedy, uh, trying to play to our out, but we've drawn some very awkward hands, so... So they're going to block this out, hopefully Xaxes. Uh, chances are, if those are two, three blocks, like they're not going to be playing around. Yeah, that's fine. Test of strength. Uh, they win the clash. We lunging press them. We end on three rune chance and pass. Um, OK. 
Okay. So now we just get back into rolling Deathly Whales. Banish Deathly, play out. No, we might want to just sit on this, honestly. Hmm. Um. Nah. Nah, yes, I don't know. So the thought right now is like, do we play out Envelop to guarantee two rune chance at end? Probably. I kind of want to sit on in, on Whale in Arsenal. We're going to take the life. Five and nine, ending on two rune chance. Okay. Oh, right. The first one's unpreventable. They're doing some blocking of the rune chance. Hmm. Nine. What does Good Time Chapeau do again? Facilitates wagering. You're gonna take nine. Interesting. Okay, we're gonna end on two rune chance. I think we're just gonna arsenal this whale. Bad idea. <laughs> Immediately punished. Uh, whatever. I mean, we'll make it work. Mav. Whale. Press. What are they doing to us? What are they doing to us? Next attack that wagers gets plus three and overpower. So nine overpower wagering, that's fine. We just have to take damage. Go to 13. I think that's okay. <laughs> yeah, we have to take it. Fifteen. Um, okay, read. We banish read either way, right? Then we go mauve. And then, yeah, we have to pitch the pummel to play this. Uh, it is for five, so they could just like naturally overblock it with a six, with two, three blocks, but we'll see. They do seem to have a decent amount of two blocks in the deck. And they might just want to give us a piece of equipment. Two block, yep. So lunging press again. We get our value off of Mob Skies on hit, which is amazing. So we end on four rune chants, which is pretty nice. They're not going to be doing much on their turn. Six. On our turn, um, I think just whale, right? Even whale envelop, so we can just give them these. Let's use tunic resource for envelop. Take the thing. Six rune chance. Six and seven. End on two rune chance. Not bad. We haven't really needed any of the envelops, like they haven't bailed us out is something notable from this game. I think there's something, I don't know how competitive Betsy is, but I think there is something, so now we draw into nothing but not but, but attacks, <laughs> um, which is sort of fine. I think we just, uh, we might want to set up actually. What if we banish Ruin? Because that can facilitate a, a wide turn next turn, now that they're on the back foot. And then we, if they really like their arsenal, I think we just present them with destruction from hand. Two and six. And then sit on the other destruction and arsenal, I guess. I don't hate that. I think, uh, I didn't finish my thought, but um, yeah, I don't know how 
competitive Betsy is, but for the amount that we've fallen on our face, we're still doing quite well. Um, but again, not sure this is a great indication. Two pummels, I like that, and a mob. I like this hand. Uh, we're going to have to pitch one of the pummels to create a rune chant, though. So... Uh, they are wagering, so this is nine overpower. Scary. Scary, scary. So, best case scenario. What is our best case scenario? Is there a world where we maw? There's no world where we both mauve and pummel. So... We are going to pitch one of the pummels to make our second rune chant. Couldn't go too wide. Ah, let's get greedy. We're going to take the nine to four. We're just testing, right? Uh, so banish the Vantam Wraith no matter what. Okay. So, and then we have to, well, we could go mob widespread, but then we just have random pummel, so that's not going to work. Um, so I think we grasp no matter what. Open that up. Now we can either present and pummel, or mob, I think that's the play, mob, uh, ruin, and then we end on... Uh, destruction. It's just numbers. Two and six plus another six, fourteen. And then we, yeah, we still float a uh, widespread wraith to the next turn. Uh, they have a bunch of stuff set up, so they want to take advantage of that stuff. They're going to be reluctant to block, but they're going to have to. They've already taken two rune chants. Uh, sure. And we still play, or present another six, which is their life total. They might be forced just to give us their hand, unless they want to go very low. To two, they are going to go to two. Which, I don't know how I feel about that. If they're able to overpower something, we are in trouble. Dominate, that's fine. We have Envelop, so even just Deathly Whale. Um, we give the Whale. We give the Grasp. We can't give Oval. Creeper's not going to come up at this point, so we can just full block it. Preserve. Uh, we want to stay. We don't want to go to two. We don't like three is a better number than two at this point. Um, there's no world where we play out both. I wonder if we actually banish Shadow Puppetry here. It feels a bit weird. But there's no world where we can play out both of the things from Banish. So in order to preserve life total... Like, it's tempting to banish... I mean, we do gain life. Yeah, we're getting greedy. <laughs> That's the name of the game. Uh, okay, Tunic Resource for Envelop. We take the damage because we're going to gain it again. And then we Deathly Delight. We end on four life. We'll lose it back to three from Deathly Wraith. Uh, Deathly Wraith. Phantom Wraith, but... And we presented an Unpreventable, and we're arsenaling our last Unpreventable we need. Excuse me. So they have to give us a card for the one rune chant. Then they have to give us two cards for Deathly Delight. Or no, three, sorry. I forgot about the buff. Yep. And then we arsenal this, and I think we just win. Yep. So. Bounding. Pitch to grasp. Uh, shadow puppetry. Take. Wraith. And that's game. Unless they have some crazy shenanigans so uh <laughs> we faced some significant adversity there again 
I don't know how competitive Betsy is, but maybe maybe she is viable right now. So uh, I don't know. But either way, that game didn't feel tight. I didn't play tight. Um, yeah, I was just kind of getting tilted a little bit. Reinar is interesting. I like this. Let's go balance. Let's showcase our... So the issue with Reinar is they can kind of lean in a couple different directions. We're going to assume they have aggro potential. No matter what, they're going to have blood rush. So I think we're going to go balance to see. Again, I don't know if I want to full lean into because they have potential to go in either direction. Uh, I want to lean a bit aggro here. Do we go pummel or do we go consistency? Hmm. I think we're going to go consistency. Better utilization of tunic. Pummel's an experiment right now, but I don't know. It didn't feel very good in that last game. We again only have Annihilation, uh, but they're going first. They rolled a six on. Uh, so we're just going to give them a bunch of cards. Uh, this is going to be an ouchy turn. Sure. They can't do anything with one card in hand, right? So we just give them hand. Okay. So we took one there, and that's fine. We do have some nice setup on turn... Our turn one. Um, we could present Delight, but I think just setting up here early game is not a bad call. So I think I want to sit on Whale. Let's pitch Delight for uh, Incant, and let's stuff in... Uh, Revel in Arsenal. I feel good about that. Uh, we only have... I kind of... This hand would be... Vi like, whenever I see Shadow Puppeteer, I want to see a two-cost ring gate card. Wish we had more two-cost ring gate cards. Um, oh, dig up dinner. They gain some life. Interesting. They have an agility for next turn. They're presenting Romping Club. They banished a Funeral Moon. I don't know why I'm talking like this. So we're going to go... Oh, wait. We have Revel. So this... I don't know what I'm talking about. We're going to go Shadow Puppetry, Deathly Whale, uh, Break Chain, Revel, Widespread. Really good. Do we want to sit on envelop for later is the question. Like, Do we take a bit of damage here? I think we take a bit of damage here. Because we're presenting so much on their next turn. And this is on a turn where they want to set up. So we're banishing Annihilation. Uh, we are going... Puppetry. Yes. Pass. Whale. Yes, yes, yes. They take one. What are they going to do about the other two? They are wanting to set up, so they're going to take some damage. Are they going to take some more damage? Nope. They're worried about that on hit, which is fair, I guess. What do we want to do with the Funeral Moon is the question. I think we want to get the value on it. So let's play it. We don't want to pay. We've already paid life. We're going to break the chain. Then we're going to make four more at a seven rune chance. We're going to press Annihilation. They are just going to have to take the rune chance probably. Or regardless, they're going to block six and take seven. Oop. Rune chance stuck. They give us their hand. Excellent. Great. Oh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> see? This is why. So I should have played... Oh, I should have pitched the Funeral Moon for Envelop. I forgot we weren't going to be able to sit on Arsenal because we also have to banish after Annihilation. So there you go. Don't ignore your widespread triggers. Um, I'm not playing very tight uh, today. We're going to... This is a pretty straightforward hand. Uh, whale... Tunic for Envelop. 
Uh, there's a world where we should have sat on the tunic resource, honestly. I keep misplaying. That's okay. You can't play tight every single day. And we're a little out of practice, which is why we're jumping on Talashar for reps. Um, do we want to sit on Sigil in Arsenal? Or do we want to just... I don't know. We don't want to IP ourselves, do we? Let's just... I don't know. Let's just get the value. We don't need to pay for the second one, obviously. 4 and 12 seems pretty good. End on 2 rune chance. Like, there's a world where we stuff something in Arsenal, but uh, I don't know. I'm trying to focus on, like, fully utilizing my hand. Um, we don't want to be IP penaltying ourselves for no reason. We're pitching Blood Rush Bellow to block green chance, which I'm really happy about. I always question why, I mean, they want to keep it in deck, I guess. Pitching a yellow, uh, like blocking two with a three block, but maybe they have another Blood Rush Bellow in hand, and they're trying to, f yep, they do. So they're trying to guarantee that hit, which is reasonable. Um, hmm. So looking at this next turn, we're going to banish the whale for sure. And probably just play it out. We could end with reed. They're going to gain a bit of life back with dig up dinner. Pulping. So they probably force our hand here. It does have dominate anyways. They only have one. Ah, they banished my widespread, which is what I would have blocked with. Um, I mean, balance? Balance, grasp. Do we care? Just balance. And then break balance before end of turn. Huh. We don't need all these cards, but hey, why not? We can block with the funeral moon. Let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, banish whale. We could... Hmm. No. We're going to present Whale. I think we're going to just Creepers or read the runes here. We're going to hope they take at least one rune chant. With four rune chants, they're very likely to. Unless they have a super awkward hand, but I feel like they're probably going to take this last rune chant. No. Wow, interesting. They had an awkward hand, I guess. Or they really want to prevent, uh, so do we, I mean, we're going to sacrifice, they're trying to prevent our rune chant generation, which is fair, honestly. Uh, so I think we just, like, sacrifice. This could be wrong. We'll make three rune chants anyways. You don't want us to have rune chants? Too bad. Um... Let's go whale. Let's go shadow puppetry. Because again, shadow puppetry whale on its own is quite good. It'll create us, uh, like we're gonna create three more. So we're gonna end on five rune chance at the very least. Um, it'd be nice if we had another blue for destruction, but. So taking the rune chance, which is reasonable, since we've made one uh, unblockable, giving us a card, they're going to let it hit, and we're going to hit a two-cost rune gate off the top. Boom. We're going to go <laughs> mob. See, this is how shadow puppetry can spiral into something insane. So because of shadow puppetry on hit, we just presented another eight damage. We're still going to end on three rune chance, which is much much higher ceiling than what this turn could have been. They're unfortunately going to intimidate our reed. Still not the end of the world. I would have really liked that. But now they've let the mob on hit. I think we just present flail. <laughs> give us a card if you don't want us to end on a rune chant is basically or give us tunic if you don't want us to end on a rune chant. They're not going to care. They've already let Mauve hit, so 
I think they're getting a little triggered. They've intimidated our reed again. We're going to banish... How many ring chants do we have? One. Right. We're going to banish Vantum Wraith. Is there a world? No. We don't have creepers anymore either. So... They are going to... No, are they? They are going to end on Arsenal. So if we want to threaten Arsenal, we're going to have to pitch. Or... <laughs> this is interesting. I think we give them Wraith. Um, so we can banish read the runes and we can play out the widespread we have in arsenal I think that's the play yeah uh, tunic so this is 2 and 6 threatening their arsenal which is pretty good and it frees up our arsenal for the, re the revel Six, they blocked the six. So they really wanted to keep their arsenal, which is good news for us. We get a cool arsenal too. Romping club with go again. They don't have anything to follow this up. They intimidated, they're triggered. Uh, okay, GG's. <laughs> All right, let's find another one. Talishar has been weird today. I just had the strangers game into a new prism that I probably cut because it's not even worth showing. Uh, I did win, but it they didn't really do anything. Um, no, I don't want to play against a Tekla boss. <laughs> what is happening? Um, Talishar's not like the greatest place to get some testing in today, apparently. Back, try again. Like, Betsy, Reinar, New Prism, Teclo. I don't feel like I'm going to encounter any of those heroes. Maybe Reinar at a PQ. KO, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Let's try Balance. It is in here for KO. Let's try Chains. It is in here for KO. Let's go Mav. Honestly, I'm like most games, most matchups, I put in the mobs and the lunging press at a minimum. Revel feels really good. Um, I think we do want some blockability here, so we're gonna go four D reacts. Yep, let's try that. So the three sigils and the one revel. see what we can do with this I wonder what I have for brute if I click brute I've submit already right so we can't change it but I'm just wondering if I click brute oh no too bad um, okay only one target for banish grasp with this mauve do we want to sit on sigil or mauve Um, let's put the sigil in arsenal. We have a chains. Mauve, deathly, reed. Feels good. Do we want to banish the chains or the bounding? Could be cool. Eh, I don't know. This is five. Go again. They did a wind up. Blood rush. Wait. Oh, this is a blood rush fellow turn. I missed that. I missed the blood rush turn. Pretty good start for them. We give them balance early. We can give them chains. I don't think. I don't think we are going to prioritize chains here. Over read, I don't think. 
I don't think. Because if we go Mauve uh, Deathly Whale, we want to follow it up with Reed probably over Chains, because Chains is too situational. So this is why I don't know if Chains is the call at all. Uh, yes, that's fine. So blocking five, let's see what else they have. We're happy to give Sigil still. Probably not going to give much more. So just a riled up. Um, do we want to give Bloodied Oval here? Probably not. Pass. Sigil. You you want this in Arsenal, so you're not going to pay. I'll block four, take four. Sure. End turn. This is pretty simple. Bounding. Mauve. Presents a non-hit that they probably don't want to uh, ignore. Three and four. On hit two, rune chance go again. Follow up with Reed is pretty good. But like we could follow up with bounding and just present another four, but I think we want the opportunity to just kind of like float four rune chance over the next turn and keep bounding as a setup piece. I like that. They're gonna take this. Give us two plus one plus three <laughs> is uh yes. And pass. Ooh, don't like, don't like. Ooh, big hit on a cast bone, or uh, yeah, on a cast bones here. Pretty good for them. Pretty good for them. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to present too, too much on our turn. I wonder if we just like hard set up. What would hard setup look like? Keeping one to banish and sitting on envelop. We're sitting on mob, honestly. We don't really need that many. So. They drew one card this turn. This is go again. Um, I think we give them envelop here, because envelop. I mean, Philip is free though. Let's give them Blue Mauve. Take five. This turn's not the one we're worried about. It's next turn. <laughs> um, do we banish the Envelope? Envelope is free with Tunic though. We banish, I think we banish blue mauve. Like we could present seven and four, but it's just damage. I think. Hmm. Seven and four follow up with flail. And the four has an on hit. I think that's actually maybe the call. We don't want to get too greedy. Yeah, I'm, I don't know why I want to be super greedy today. I think we're gonna go mob skies and like four is a break point they need to get over. So we're gonna go mob skies and go seven and four. So we're gonna punish them. If they wanna keep their hand to fully utilize their crazy might agility setup that they have, they're gonna have to take some damage here. This gives them an on hit that they really need to consider. They could throw some pieces, but I'm happy for them to give us flesh bag this turn on a turn where it doesn't really matter. We get to sit on envelop as a setup piece for next turn. I do like this. And yeah, this is awesome. This is exactly what we want. Uh, they don't get their value from flashback, which can represent like seven, eight value uh, if they play at the right time. We get a setup piece for next turn, uh, which might just be whale. So start with a Savage Feast for 13, no big deal. Shenanigans. I call shenanigans. I think floating uh, rune chances... We're going to start by giving Deathly Delight. We're going to take 10 to 19. Because this is certainly not the last thing they're going to do. There's only a 6 life point disparity here. I'm just trying to make myself feel better. <laughs> um... We take the three from Claw. Let's see what else you got. 
Wild ride. One float. Wild ride. One. F oh no! Discarding the beast with him. This is a scary turn. Oh. Bloody Doval, bail us out. Um. They drew discarded from Wild Ride. What did they play this turn? Uh, the first one was Savage Feast. Wait. We don't block with it. We want to activate it. We should have activated it before. No, we had no opportunity. Um, I mean, they're going to present something else after this, so let's just give them equipment, take another 3 to 13, break balance to see what we draw. Okay, so we can give them, that just gained us another 3 life, essentially. They're still going to end on Arsenal? My god, another 8. What was this turn? 13... 13 plus 3, 16 plus 6, 22 plus 8, 30. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Like, we're still going to come back with some pressure. Take another 5 to 8, I guess. I guess. We got to just see if we can bounce back here. Um, Deathly Whale, Envelop, Envelop, we'll take the first one, nope, so three and a nine, three and nine, <clears throat> 12 damage to swing back, Oh, they get another scary turn. They're just going to try and keep their foot on the gas. Which makes sense. Another wild ride. Draw a discard. Seven go again. Make a might. Our turn is going to be simple. It's going to be... Banish... Uh, discard... We'll, uh, we'll just use the D-React here. Do they want to give us their little resource that they have floating here? Who knows? Nope. Full block. What do you got? Something scary, probably. Roll scabbies. Roll a one on scabbies. That's the play. Pitching. Ah, I see. They needed the one because they only had reds. Pack hunt for Intimidate or Deathly Whale. Fine. Or Deathly Delight. Can we afford to take three to four? We are going to present eight next turn. Yep, we're going to have to. We're not in a situation where we're desperate enough to give them equipment pieces. Three and five. Are you going to let us gain life? So eight damage... If they didn't block, they would go to three. We would go to five. They go to three. We go to five. Um, we would need to. K yeah, end game is is tough to navigate. It's been set. If we wanted to play something out, we'd have to keep these three cards. Which is unlikely. They're going to go 5 go again. 6 go again. With the might. That's right. Oh. So. Next turn is probably a setup turn. Because we'd have to basically banish. The only line here is banish widespread destruction. Pitch to grasp. Tunic for envelop. Play out destruction. <clears throat> There's a world where, I mean, let's go to three and see. If they present, uh, like if they just present Claw, 
No, we're still in trouble. Doesn't matter. Uh, what they do, we aren't going to be able to do anything next turn. What do you have? Okay, intimidate, five. We just give them five. Yeah. We can't present flail because we're not going to one. So we are just gonna banish pass. And I hope to God they fall on their face, but pretty unlikely. Mm. Ugh. I really wish we had creepers. Five, go again. <laughs> um, yeah. Best case scenario, we survive. Oh, we don't survive. Yeah. GG's. Good game. Exaxes. Not bad. Uh, they had an insane Blood Rush Fellow turn. I feel like if they didn't have that, we would have been, obviously, it goes without saying, in a much better position. Um, very good game. And that actually felt like a helpful game. In hindsight, I wonder if we want more value from, like, do we play more defense reactions into that matchup? We do have to hope that things line up to a certain degree. Um, I don't know. I might have to streamline my sideboard a little bit more. Is Husk good into that matchup, I wonder? Husk might be good into KO. To try and just, like, swing that momentum back in our favor. It's a fast matchup, so Tunic becomes less valuable. And I don't know if Carapace quite cuts it. I wonder if Husk is good in Takeo. Hmm. Something to consider. Well, I think we're actually going to call it there. Uh, I got quite a few games in. Some of them were not that helpful. Talishar felt weird today. Uh, lots of... I mean, the meta is pretty wide open right now. But I had a few games that just didn't feel very representative or, you know, helpful in terms of prep for, you know, the meta that I'm likely to encounter at a PQ. Um, so I, I don't know which couple games that I decided to show, but I think we played five or six. Uh, we only lost one against the KO, uh, which was a very close game. And I feel like it could have gone either way. Depends on who high rolls first. And we really didn't high roll. Um, so, you know, just doing our regular stuff. Uh, we were able to help hold our own um, and it really did come down to I think like one big turn so uh, anyways I feel pretty good about the deck still um, I hope you guys found something helpful from this I didn't find that practice session to be entirely helpful to tell you the truth um, but I hope you guys give the deck a try as well um, let me know if you have any suggestions you know some of those sideboard pieces that I'm floundering on uh, what you would put in um, what you see being well positioned or, or you know, helpful uh, in the current meta, all this kind of stuff. So anyways, thanks so much for watching as always, everybody. We'll see you soon. Cheers.